I remember two Jehovah's Witnesses came to my door once, and they said, Sir, could we ask you a question? I said, Absolutely. And they said, Do you see any problems in the world today? I said, oh, absolutely. They said, oh, great. What are some of those problems that you see? I say, oh, there's lots of them. There's wars, there's famines. You know, people are mean to each other. There's abuse. Oh, oh, we totally agree. That's, that's true. Why do you think that those are happening? I said, well, because people aren't loving each other. People aren't um, being nice to each other. You know, they're, they're being mean to each other. And anytime you don't love, bad things happen. They say, oh, we agree again. You know, we, we totally agree 100%. But why do you think those things are happening? And I said, well, because it's simple. The world has turned away from God. And the more we turn away from God, the more evil is going to reign. And they said, oh, you're right. Why? That you, we agree 100%. Why do you think that happens, sir, if you don't mind us asking? I said, well, because so many people have left the Catholic Church, and they've started all these other man-made religions, and now these other man-made religions contradict each other. I mean, you have Jehovah's Witnesses who think they're true. You have Mormons. You have Seventh-day Adventists. You have all these religions who were started in the 17, 18, 1900s who all think they're true, but they're all man-made religions, and people have forgotten the Catholic Church and its truth. And at this point, the two missionaries were like, and they both looked at each other, and they didn't know what to say, and one of them said, well, I used to be Catholic, and then I left the Catholic Church and found the witnesses. And I replied, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry that you left the Catholic Church in the Church of Jesus. Jesus started the Catholic Church 2,000 years ago, and Charles Taze Russell, an 18-year-old boy, started the Jehovah's Witnesses. And I said, really, he started a Bible study that Rutherford, his successor, would turn into an organized religion later and call the Jehovah's Witnesses, but that's not the true Church of Jesus. So you left the true Church of Jesus and I want to implore you to think about that and to consider coming home to the true church of our Lord Jesus. I remember I said, uh, how many miracles happen in the Jehovah's Witness Church? You know, how many miracles have you seen? And they said, oh, well, we haven't seen any because uh, miracles don't happen. They happen in the apostolic times, but they're not going to happen until the end of the world. I said, oh, well, how do you explain then the fact that miracles happen in the Catholic Church all the time? I said, don't you think maybe they don't happen in your church, but they do in the Catholic church? And they said, well, that's kind of impossible, they said, because according to the Bible, it's not going to happen until Jesus comes again. And I said, where does the Bible say that? And they said, oh, uh, uh, and they tried to give me a couple of verses which really didn't hold up. And I said, listen, there's a nun. Her name is Sister Breach McKenna. I have her book on my shelf. It's called Miracles Do Happen. And she talks about all the miracles she's done. Father Fernando Suarez, who's healed blind people, made people's bones grow out. Catholic priests who have raised others from the dead. There was even a Catholic priest on 60 Minutes who healed someone from blindness on TV. And the scientists had no idea how he did it. I mean, so many miracles happen in the Catholic Church. And again, I want to re-invite you to consider coming home to the Catholic Church. At this point, they're like, uh, well, thank you. We actually have to get going. And it was nice talking to you. And I was like, it's nice talking to you. You can be assured of my prayers, my sisters. And they walked away and I prayed for them. Many years ago, I almost lost my faith to the Jehovah's Witnesses. They came up to me and told me that Jesus wasn't God, that Constantine started the Catholic Church. They told me all of these things that at the time, as a new Catholic, uh, I didn't know. And I don't mean a new Catholic like I converted. I mean, I didn't know my faith. I, I was new to starting to learn my faith, discover it, study about it, learn about it, that sort of thing. And I couldn't explain my faith to save my soul. And yet, far from converting me, they almost did. The Jehovah's Witnesses had me shaken in my faith, but it backfired on them. I ended up going to research the Catholic Church and the Jehovah's Witnesses, Mormons, Seventh-day Adventists, and all the religions because I wanted to know which one was correct. And what I found was that the Catholic Church is the only church that goes back to the time of Jesus. It's the only church that Jesus started that goes back 2,000 years and that has the truth from him. And thousands and maybe millions of people misunderstand what they think is the Catholic Church. But when you understand what the Catholic Church truly is, how could you become Catholic? And so that's why I'm a Catholic speaker today. And that's why I'm such a, a prominent Catholic today, because the Jehovah's Witnesses helped me to find my faith.
I remember going to a Jehovah's Witness church. I remember after I learned my faith enough and I started going after them, I started knocking on their doors. And I went to a Jehovah's Witness church and I brought a magazine and I said, hey, I've been reading your Watchtower magazine and I have a question. Can I come in? And they said, oh, sir, absolutely. Sure. Come on in. I said, thanks so much. And they said, what's your question? They brought me into this big back room and they sat me down at this huge table and, you know, they were all excited to answer my questions. And I said, well, I have a lot of family that's Catholic, <laughs> which I do, not a lie. And I said, on the back of your magazine here, it says that the Immaculate Conception of what the Catholics teach, it says that the Immaculate Conception is where Jesus was conceived in Mary. And I said, that's actually not what the Immaculate Conception is. I said the Immaculate Conception is where Mary was born without sin, according to the Catholic Church, and she remained sinless throughout her whole life. And if you want to learn more about that, we have a whole video on that. Surprise, surprise. The lady said, oh, I'll have to look into that. I said, well, from the outside looking in, it's very concerning that you're organization is printing things that are not true about other religions. And she immediately got defensive and said, well, the Catholic churches sh should be should offend you too. I mean, they've been teaching uh, wrong things for hundreds and hundreds of years. They're the biggest perpetrator of teaching error. And I said, like what? And I said, like the Immaculate Conception? I said, is it possible that your organization has told you wrong things about the Catholic Church and that the Catholic Church isn't actually wrong about what they teach? And she said, well, we go by the Bible. And I said, the Catholic Church claims to go by the Bible, too. She's like, yeah, but we're the Bible Track Society. We go specifically by the Bible. Other religions claim it, but we actually do. I said, do you realize that every religion pretty much claims that? And she said, well, it's irrelevant because the Catholic Church... I said, did you know that the Catholic Church gave you the Bible you read? So the Catholic Church was the church that made the Bible in 397 AD at the Catholic Council of Carthage. It was the Catholic Church who copied the Bible. Her monks, her priests, her nuns copied it for over a thousand years, rescued it from barbarians and Vikings and different tribes who burned it and were burning libraries to the ground. And the Catholic Church gave the Bible to the world. And she said, that's not true. And her husband put up his hand and started to interject. And he came in and said, that's actually not true. Earliest Christians were the ones who put the Bible together, not the Catholic Church. I said, actually, historically, sir, it was the Catholic Church. It was early Christians, he said. I said, okay, well, can you answer me this question, sir? What were the names of these earliest Christians? Can you give me any? And he all became visibly uncomfortable. He's like, I, I hope you're not coming here to try and convert me. And I said, I'm just asking some questions. I'm curious. Can you tell me the earliest Christians who put the Bible together? What were their names? What years did it happen? And he said, uh, well, Jerome was one of them. I said, did you know that Jerome was a Catholic? I mean, I could prove to you that Jerome was a Catholic. And uh, all the earliest Christians were Catholic. If, have you read the earliest Christians? And they said, well, no, we haven't read their writings. I said, oh, you should read their writings. They're beautiful. And they're all Catholic. They teach Catholic doctrines. They teach what Catholics teach today. The earliest Christians were absolutely Catholic. And they said, no, they weren't. They weren't Roman Catholic at all. The whole Jehovah's Witnesses replied and said, no, they weren't Catholic. They weren't Catholic at all. They were just using Catholic in a universal generic sense. To which I replied, I thought you said you haven't read the early Christians. So how would you actually know that? And they immediately got defensive again and said, I hope you're not coming here to try and convert me. It's not going to work, you know. We go convert other people, but trying to come here and convert me. I said, sir, I'm just asking questions. I'm trying to get to the bottom of this. And you're getting very defensive. I said, historically, the Catholic Church gave the world the Bible unless you can give me proof otherwise. And they said the Catholic Church has killed millions of people. And her, no, I said, that's actually a myth probably given to you by your organization, but it's actually not true. And I said, in fact, your organization lies to you constantly. I don't know if you realize this, but the Jehovah's Witnesses predicted the world to end in 1914, 1915, 1918, 1925, 1975, and other times too, sir. I was like, did you realize that they predicted Armageddon to happen in all these times and it failed? And according to Deuteronomy 18, anyone who predicts something to happen in the name of the Lord and it doesn't come to pass, they are false prophets. So your, your watchtower, your organization has lied to you. They've mistaken you. They've deceived you. And they're teaching you something that's false. And it, immediately the woman started to shake. And she started to get really like scared. She started crying like 
like like screechy weird crying and she said you you catholics you all you all have blood on your hands you blooded your murderers you're blooded she literally was just freaked out and out of nowhere and i was like okay i think that's my cue to go thank you for answering my questions today i I will pray for you. I hope you guys have a good day. Your murderers, blood on your hands. Like I'm walking out the door. She was still carrying on. I was like, whoa. I was like, there are some deep issues going on there. And it's so unfortunate that so many ex-Catholics are Jehovah's Witnesses of all religions. The Jehovah's Witnesses were started by an 18-year-old boy and are no better than Mormons, Seventh-day Adventists, the Church of God, and all the other religions that were started around that time. None of them were started by Jesus. None of them have the true truth of Jesus. The only truth they have is what they say of themselves. Well, we go by the Bible. Well, that's what every religion says. Yeah, but we really go by the Bible. We, we go, we're true to scripture. That's what every religion says. That's why they all think they're right. Yeah, but we're led by the Holy Spirit. That's what every religion says. Can you see a problem here? It doesn't matter what you personally believe. It matters what tradition you have received. Your tradition only goes back 200 years. Jehovah's Witnesses can't find anything about the 144,000 blood transfusions, not celebrating Christmas or Easter, and many other doctrines that they have in the earliest Christians. Similar to Mormons and other religions, the Jehovah's Witnesses can't find any, most of their teachings in the earliest Christians, meaning they don't go back to the early church, meaning they weren't started by Jesus, and they didn't have the constant constant tradition that was passed down from one to the next to the next, down through the centuries like the Catholic Church has received today. For example, if you look at the Catholic Church, the Jehovah's Witnesses teach that the Lord's Supper is just a symbol, like most Protestant churches, Mormons in them. But the earliest Christians taught that it was more than a symbol. They taught that it was truly Jesus, his true body and his true blood. Now you can find that teaching in the year 1500. 1300, 900, 500, 300, and in the first and second centuries. This is the teaching that goes back to the first centuries, as opposed to Jehovah's Witness teaching, like the 144,000. No early Christian taught that. Mormonism, baptism for the dead, nobody taught that. These are things that have been invented by men hundreds and thousands of years later. And so many witnesses who have come out of the Jehovah's Witnesses, and I have a friend who's brought hundreds and hundreds out of the Watchtower and have helped dozens to become Catholic, and they said they've never been happier. In fact, one, one man and his wife, he, they just love being Catholic. And they said, if you ever talk to any Jehovah's Witnesses, Brian, tell them that we have never been happier as a Catholic. Everything we learned about the Catholic Church is wrong. We now know they're true Jesus. He's life-changing. We're actually filled free and happy on the inside, and we've never been happier in our entire life. And I think that just sums up the Catholic Church in a relationship with Jesus. There may be some good things in other religions, but the fullness of truth is only found in the Catholic Church. So I just want to thank the Jehovah's Witnesses many years ago in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania for challenging me in my faith. And I want to thank them for helping me to discover it, to deepen it, and really make it profound in my life. Now it's life-changing, and I want to thank you, Jehovah's Witnesses. You're doing the best you can with the truth that you have, and I appreciate that, but there's so much more. If there aren't any Jehovah's Witnesses out there, people who are questioning, I know you're not allowed to question, it's frowned upon in the Watchtower, but if you secretly want to ask us questions, or if you would like us to plug you in with some uh, witnesses who can answer your questions, and we have brought witnesses home to the Catholic Church who can help answer your questions, just let us know in the comment section below or privately at info at the Catholic truth.org info at the Catholic truth.org. And we will answer your questions privately or publicly below. If you're not a witness and you have questions about the Jehovah's Witnesses or just about anything we've said in this video, feel free to put a comment below. We'd love to hear from you down below. What is your experience with Jehovah's Witnesses? Have you had experiences like these? Do you have stories like these? We'd love to hear your comments down below. So thanks so much for watching and please do your part to share the gospel. Like this video. Give that like button a little kiss. Nice gentle little touch. And please share this on your social media. And please put a comment down below. All these things help to make these videos more popular so that more people see them, so that more lives are changed, and more people come back to 
Christ. May God bless you. Thank you so much for watching. And in the spirit of the new year, if you could support our ministry and help us to reach so many more people for Christ, we would be appreciative. I just want to thank our new patrons. We just had a new patron for $10 a month, another patron for $50 a month, a couple who gave $100 donations, someone who gave a $50 and a $25 donation, and all of the others. We want to thank you. It's hard to thank everyone individually, but we want to thank you for what you do for our ministry. You truly are helping us to change lives. Never doubt that. You're not just giving money. You are part of our family. You're part of this team. You're part of our mission, and you are helping to change lives. So thank you for what you do. If you're not a patron yet and you want to consider supporting our ministry, we need you. We don't exist without you. And the more you help us, the more we can help others. So join our team. Become a patron and support us so we can support others in Christ. God bless you, and Happy New Year.